So are you interested in making travel vlogs, but not sure what equipment you need to do the task? Maybe you would love to set up a mobile content creation studio on a budget. It can certainly be daunting. All kinds of equipment online, all kinds of perspectives, different opinions, and lots of reviews, not to mention it can be extremely expensive. I've spent the last year basically answering these questions for myself. And during this year, I basically was determining what equipment was absolutely essential for my content while prioritizing ruggedness, portability, and value. So in today's video, we're gonna take a look at three of the main categories of essential video equipment for a mobile vlogger. The best and cheapest options for filling these categories in 2024. And finally, we're gonna take a look at some nice but not necessary items that you can use to really enhance your impact of your content. So we'll start out with the most important, and that's basically your camera. And the cheapest is of course what you already have. And I would probably guess that you have a cell phone. Lucky for you, most cell phones do absolutely fine in today's day and age. For instance, this camera right here is actually on an iPhone 12 Pro running 1080p at 30 frames per second, basically enough for you to do anything you want to do. And if that's not the case, it might be time for you to upgrade. I would take a look at the iPhone 11 Pro. They can be found online for anywhere from two to $300. And you can also go cheaper and you can check out the Samsung S9, which does very well and it's right around $100. Some of the pros with using a cell phone for your footage is that, well, you already have it, it's cheap. You probably have a case for it, you know how to use it, and it's super small and portable. Some of the cons associated with that are, basically stability can be a problem. You're holding the camera, you're shaking it around like this, people bump into you. It's hard to keep the footage straight and steady. And in addition to that, if you wanna do a fixed type of recording like this, it's hard to do. You gotta jerry-rig some type of mechanism to hold it up. And typically the sound isn't the best with cell phones. Reason being is they're meant to be very, very close to your head. And when you hold them out or when you're walking through a crowd, something like this, it can be distorted, it can mess up and just generally sound bad. With regard to helping with the stability, there's always tripods. I personally have used the Joby Gorillapod for a few years now and it's been absolutely fantastic. It's extremely strong. It's got magnetic feet that allows it to grab pretty much any type of metal with a robust grab. It's stable, it comes with a cell phone adapter, has a screw for other camera types, it locks into place, and I think it comes in right around $30 to $40 on Amazon, depending on which one you purchase. With sound issues you encounter while filming with a cell phone, they can often easily be remedied with a nice Bluetooth microphone. And right now I'm just recording with my cell phone's audio so you can get an idea, and now I'm using the DJI microphone that comes with the Pocket 2 that we'll get into a bit later. And Bluetooth quality actually improves all the time. Every year it's better and better. And there's all kinds of options online. So take a look, read some reviews, see the price points and decide what works best for you. And if you have a Bluetooth microphone that you know and you love and you're familiar with, write in the comments what you use, why you like it and why we should pick it up. It benefits me and it benefits everyone who's watching. So thank you in anticipation. And some of you guys might be wondering, what about large frame cameras? You know, what about the Canon? What about the Nikon? What about the Sony, the Panasonic? The big ones that the serious photographers use. Well, to be honest, they're, they're fantastic. They get better and better each year. And often they're getting smaller as well. But for me, they're not the most mobile. They tend to be bigger. They tend to take external batteries. They tend to be expensive. They tend to have lenses that extend requiring you to have a big case to carry all your stuff. So for those reasons, I don't really consider them good mobile vlogging cameras. I used the Sony A5100 for the first few years of doing YouTube, and it works fantastic for the kind of talking head videos that we're doing right now. It was just kind of a pain and I did not like it and promptly got rid of it. And the reason I actually got rid of it is because I noticed that another company saw the same issues with needing a small, capable camera for traveling that wouldn't break the bank. And this amazing company is known as DJI. And in 2018, DJI actually made a wonderful solution to this problem, the Osmo Pocket. The DJI 2, which is actually what I'm shooting on right now, has a 64 megapixel camera, which is huge. It can shoot in 4K, 1080p, various frame rates as well. So pretty much everything you need. Not only that, it can actually have face tracking capabilities. As you can see, wherever I move, it will follow me around, which is super useful. For instance, if you're walking, walking through a town, lifting it up, wanting to have it keep your face front and centered, it's just a useful, very nice thing to have that enhances the quality of your cinematography. And in terms of, I guess, cons, there really aren't too many, especially with the DJI Pocket 2. And something to note real quick is that in 2023, DJI actually came out with the DJI Pocket 3. Because the third came out, the second's price plummeted quite a bit. 
So right now I think you can pick up twos for about $270, $400 for that and the complete creator kit, which I certainly recommend getting, while the three is priced around $670 for the kit with the microphone and sometimes more for some of the other packages there. So I would definitely recommend you checking out two. It'll revolutionize your cinematography and your vlogging experience. And if you go that route, be sure to pick up an SD card. They're cheap, they're plentiful. This one is 128 gig, it works just fine. Make sure you pick up a tripod as well, like we talked about earlier. And finally, definitely check out a carrying case. There's all kinds of cheap aftermarket cases of varying sizes, depending on how many extra goodies you got, available on AliExpress and Amazon. There's all kinds of options. Check those out. It protects it, keeps it safe and convenient to move it. Definitely something you wanna pick up with the DJI Pocket. And moving on from that, you're gonna need a laptop and software to actually do your editing, right? That makes sense. Some people might be saying, hey, don't cell phones do editing right now? And yes, they do. Cell phones are really limited. They're good if you have a few clips and you're maybe doing a 60 second or so video. Anything more, anything longer with more longer clips, you're gonna want a big display, maybe two displays. The ease of use and editing experience is much better with a desktop or a laptop. And of course, I'm excluding desktops because they're not mobile. They're not no mobile vlogging. You can't take them on vacation. So that leaves us with laptops, right? And the biggest thing when considering a computer is just its processing power. I personally use MacBooks. The reason, if you look online, it's quite evident. They're always known to have been optimized and better for videography and editing than their PC counterparts. Especially, most recently, the M1 and M2 chips that came out in 2020 afterwards. Everywhere you look online, they're number one. No PCs are even mentioned to be considered for editing, even with people who are PC fanboys. So it's really just that good of a platform. And I used the 2019 MacBook Pro for all of my editing needs up until March of this this year, you can find used 2019s for, you know, about $400. But if you can, you can afford it. I definitely make the jump up to the M1 or M2 chip in the 2020 Max and later. They're gonna be much more useful for your editing, more longevity, and basically just streamline and make your whole editing process much smoother. And once you have your computer squared away, you're gonna to need to think about which editing software you're going to use. And there's all kinds on the market with more and more coming out pretty much every month. But for me, the most important thing for the sake of this video is really the ease of use. How, how scary is it for you to use? Does it make you want to use it more? And of course, the price. And another fantastic benefit of Macs is they actually come equipped with a fantastic, albeit kind of beginner software called iMovie. And this is one of the first kids on the block, the first one I'd ever heard about, and it's really, really awesome for your basic needs, and even actually into your intermediate needs. The pros are, like I said, it's free, it comes with it, it makes you feel like a rock star. You can almost teach yourself, there's all kinds of tutorials online, and it's just a fantastic way to get started in doing your basic editing needs. The cons are, maybe it's a bit of an older style, it's been out for a long time, they don't do that many updates as often as some of the other newer programs. It's kind of set in stone in terms of what it is and what it can do. They're not really trying to reinvent it very much or make it competitive to the newer softwares, but that's okay. It'll last you for a good while. And when you consider actually stepping up, there's a lot more to talk about as well. I mostly right now use CapCut. And CapCut is a software that was developed originally for TikTok and Douyin. And CapCut is great for me because it just does so many things that iMovie can't do. It's got filters, it's got effects, it's got color grading, it's got free B-roll, it's got music, it'll check your music for plagiarism, it'll add captions, it can do all kinds of things, and they actually have a really, really robust free version. And when you choose the software, again, the most important thing is the fact that you use it, you push it to its limits, you know its capabilities, you become a better editor, and it's really not important to have the best thing on the block. And speaking of moving up to the best, when you find it's time to do that, you can check out Adobe Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut Pro. And once you get your software sorted, it brings us to the final category of equipment that you need. And that is basically storage and sound. So when you start editing videos and when you take all the footage, you're gonna quickly realize that they're large files. 4K videos tend to be very, very large. One hour of footage can actually push you into between 45 and 60 gigs of space. And that may not sound like a lot, but most laptops only have between 500 and 1000 gigs. And so as you can see, if you have a file that's you know 50 gigs, that can fill up your hard drive very, very quickly. And the reason you want to not allow that to happen is because having a full hard drive basically slows your computer down. And I've even had instances where I had too many things on the hard drive and it actually crashed mid editing, which is not fun after you put in lots of hours on a project. And there's two main options you can do to solve this storage problem. 
There's first one, which is basically online storage. And then you have the old school, the external hard drive storage. Both have pros and cons. In terms of online storage, well, it's very convenient, right? If you have online, if you have internet access, you can upload and access your files whenever you want. Some of the cons are if you don't have internet access, you can't access your files, right? Who knows what could happen with their servers that store your files. So if you don't have it backed up, that's your only backup. Some of the options include iCloud, Google Drive, Dropbox, Amazon Web Services, and a few others. And the other option is external drives. And there's lots and lots of options of mobile ones, you know, about the size of a thick credit card or a wallet kind of thing between two and eight terabytes, which is likely more space than you'll need for any trip you're ever going to take. I just picked up this one from Amazon. It's a good bang for the buck and I'm pretty confident it's gonna serve me well on my next trip. And the final piece of hardware I recommend to you is really having an external audio microphone recording system. If you get a USB microphone for your phone, oftentimes wind can mess with it or you can smack it and rub like this right there and it's kind of annoying to hear. It doesn't sound very good. Additionally, sometimes you just have errors like this has gone out before once or twice and I'm still not sure why. I think maybe interference with some other, you know, Wi-Fi signal, something like this. So because of these experiences, I learned it's good to have an external recording just as, you know, insurance and backup. These are usually pretty cheap, robust, they're really good for, you know, discussion, interviews, set them on your table, or you can use them, even carry them with you when you're going out. And I have one laying down right here. And that's the difference you can hear right now between me talking now and me talking here in the Bluetooth or me talking here in the cell phone, right? They're all different, right? This one sounds a little bit more professional, lots of ways you can tweak it. And not only is it good for that, but I found it extremely useful for doing voiceovers. You know, when, you, when you've done all of your shooting, when you're editing, doing post-production, you'll sometimes find that there's a scene or maybe a walking scene or a transition that doesn't have any fun audio going on. And basically you can just talk over areas that you don't like or areas where you wanna add something. And there's all kinds of options you can have online with these. It's ranging from cheap to really expensive. And I end up picking the Zoom H1N Handy Recorder. It's small, it's got a little protector, it's got all kinds of options for audio files. And if you go this route, you gotta make sure to get the right cable. It's a micro USB. And also be sure to pick up a micro SD card for it, just like with the DJI Pocket 2. And so, as I said before, this little microphone does everything you need it to do, and probably a lot more than you need it to do. I certainly have not pushed it to its capacities, and I haven't found a need to upgrade in the past few years. And with those items, you basically have everything you need for a total mobile vlog content creator setup. You got your camera, you got your computer and your software, and you got your storage and your sound. And most importantly, guys, start with what you have, buy what you need, but be sure to use everything you have to its full extent for value and for yourself, for your learning curve before buying something else. And a few of the nice but not necessary items you can get to really enhance the quality of your footage. First one is really for those set on using their cell phone as their primary camera. As we discussed before, it can have some problems with stability. You know, when you're walking around shaking, it, it can be kind of annoying. So the solution to that is to get what's called a gimbal. And this is a way to stabilize your footage while walking. And the pros of these is that, you know, it stabilizes the footage and makes it look much more professional, clean, and easy to watch. They're generally large and bulky, which kind of hurts portability. And the cheapest ones definitely don't work as well, even though they may advertise it. I'd recommend checking out the DJI Osmo Mobile SE. It has tons of features. It's got fantastic reviews and ratings. It comes with a tripod. And I think it comes in cheaper than a lot of the competitors, and it was priced there intentionally. A second item that's nice but not necessary is basically action cameras. And you know action cameras, these GoPro heroes, these little boxy guys that you see mountain bikers wear, motorcyclists wear on their helmets, clip on. And these things are really designed for rough activities like kayaking, hiking, mountain biking. And they're often also waterproof in case you wanna take them into aquatic environments. And in short, they're nice, they're rugged, they're convenient, they're waterproof, and they still shoot in great quality. So this could be an option if you plan to be more active. And I'm personally gonna be picking up a DJI Action 3 or 4 for an upcoming trip because I plan to do some hiking, some mountaineering, as well as some water activities as well. And one more nice but not necessary for you is drones. All you guys probably know what drones are at this point. They're these little like uh, helicopter flying units that are known to have really good cameras, gimbal stabilization, and can often shoot really good video as well. 
And some of the pros is they can be super cool for shots, cinematic feels coming into you, coming out. Not only that, but they often can track you, kind of like this one is tracking me now. So if you're gonna be walking along a mountain edge, it can be over the cliff watching you, or it can watch your car come towards it or behind it. So it kind of adds a unique perspective that you can't do when you're just walking around shooting or having a fixed setup like this. Some of the cons though is, I think they have a rather limited use for most people's needs. For instance, you know, an aerial drone shot of you doing something might only comprise five or six seconds of your total video. So it's really up to you. If you're doing a nature type of blog, it might be really good, might be a good option, but they also tend to be very, very fragile. They're pretty expensive. If you nick the helicopter blade and it goes and crashes, that could be the end of your drone. And in addition to that, it can also be illegal in certain places, depending on where you go, which can limit its usability. And although DJI does make some really small ones, the minis that almost are about the same size as the DJI Pockets case, most of them are generally bigger, heavier, require extra batteries, a controller, and basically don't make your mobile setup as mobile as it would be otherwise. And although these tools that we covered today are super important, the most important tool you have for creating good and engaging content is the one between your ears. Yes, your brain. So these items I covered today in the kit are pretty much all I've been using for the past 30 videos that I've created. From a POV tour of Vegas and Christmas, to going on bullet trains, cruising from start to finish, food vlogs, walking through an ancient river town, all kinds of things. So if any of those topics sound like something you'll be making in the future, definitely check out the other videos on my page, get some ideas, get some inspiration to help you in your future content creation needs. And speaking of the future, if you've been following me or the page for any length of time, you'll know I'm a China guy and I spent a lot of time in China shooting videos and I've been uploading them quite often. And many people are asking me, you know, what are you doing? What content's coming next? And I'm going to tell you, but I'm not gonna tell you now. You're gonna have to stay tuned for next week when I explain, you know, what I'm doing right now, where I'm at, what I've been shooting, and what videos are coming next. If you got some value from today's video, drop a comment about what you learned, what equipment you wanna buy, or what you think is the ultimate vlog set up on a budget. And until next time, guys, we'll see you in the next video.